In this video, we're gonna be covering the two main reasons that athletes should consider using hyperbaric oxygen as part of their routine throughout their year, whether it's training or whether it's in season, hyperbaric oxygen is critical to be a part of that program, and that's what we're gonna cover in today's video. Real quick, if you're a practitioner or you're looking to get into hyperbarics, I want you to know that we offer a series of courses, some of which are online and some of which are in person. We have a few in-person courses coming up over the next few months and registration is closing soon. So head over to hbotusa.com forward slash events and secure your spot today. Many, many years ago, long before I was doing any hyperbaric videos or let alone a hyperbaric office or before I was even in practice, my first formal education was exercise physiology. And in exercise physiology, we were always looking at increasing athletic performance. And what it came down to was Twofold. One, what are all the ingredients that really go into an athlete being able to perform at their peak when they need to? And on the flip side of that was, are they recovering at the level that they need to recover in order to perform? If you haven't seen our videos on hormesis, please go watch that because we discuss the hormetic effect and the hormetic curve. And one of the things that we talk about in there is when an athlete is starting to perform, they're measuring their progress, they're working hard, they're training, they're measuring their progress, they're working hard, they're training, they're measuring their progress, they're looking for a steady incline in their performance. And what happens is if we're not either getting all the ingredients that we needed for performance or in most cases we're under recovering, we're gonna start to see a decline in performance. But when an athlete sees a decline in performance, their first thought is not, oh, I must not be recovering well, I'm not resting enough. The athlete's first response is, I'm not working hard enough. And so training gets an uptick, performance goes down. Training gets an uptick, performance continues to slide. And what that becomes is a negative feedback loop where we train harder, yet we still see performance slipping. That's the number one indicator that this person is now under-recovered and could not perform well no matter how hard they work. They need to create a more formal and more effective recovery plan so that their performance can improve. Now, hyperbaric happens to be one of these very unique tools that can fill both buckets. It can fill the recovery bucket using it a certain way, and it can fill the performance bucket if we think about hyperbaric through a different lens. And those are the two areas I wanna to cover today. So really, a lot of the athletes that see a pattern similar to what I was describing earlier, they really need to improve their recovery. Recovery is about rest regeneration. And we know, if you've watched any of my videos, that hyperbaric is very anabolic. It plays a critical role in tissue repair, tissue regeneration. And so using it as a recovery tool, to me, is a no-brainer for literally every athlete. Oxygen is literally one of the ingredients to the fuel system. In fact, it's one of the rate-limiting ingredients to the fuel system that cells are gonna need to repair from the bout of exercise or from the last competition or from the last training round in order to heal and prepare for the next bout. Again, if you've seen other videos that we've made on hyperbaric, you know that hyperbaric happens to be one of the only, if not maybe the only tool to get a meaningful amount of oxygen that's additional to the amount of oxygen that you and I are carrying right now. That pressurized environment is literally a requirement for driving the excess oxygen into our body, into our plasma, in order to create a surplus of oxygen necessary to actually stimulate an increased healing effect. The harder this athlete is working, the harder this athlete is training, the more recovery is necessary, the more oxygen is necessary. We also know that athletes are always looking for an edge. And one of those edges that some athletes turn to is blood doping. Why is blood doping so effective from a performance standpoint? Ultimately, because blood doping, in a certain way, improves red blood cell carrying capacity. Maybe it improves red blood cell production, or maybe it's actually a synthetic red blood cells. But either way, the whole key to blood doping is really increased red blood cell number and increased red blood cell carrying capacity so that we can deliver more oxygen to the working tissues. We also know that blood doping is illegal and has a lot of health consequences when done for any length of time. The interesting thing about hyperbaric, again, is that in that pressurized environment, it is creating a surplus of oxygen, completely independent of red blood cell carrying capacity. In fact, hyperbaric bypasses the red blood cell carrying capacity altogether. And so hyperbaric, when used the right way, could absolutely be used as a performance-enhancing tool that's safe to use and, as importantly, legal to use 
for any type of athletic performance. And so loading with oxygen prior to an event can absolutely provide that athlete with the surplus of oxygen required for that next competition. So what should these programs look like? They're very different. The recovery program is all about using hyperbaric for regeneration of tissue. And those sessions are gonna be longer and more frequent. You're really trying to use hyperbaric not only to load up oxygen as a fuel source for recovery and repair, but you're also using the parasympathetic stimulation of hyperbaric. You wanna get the body into the parasympathetic mode because we know that all the healing and recovery happens when we're relaxed, when we're in our parasympathetic state. If we're stuck in fight or flight or the sympathetic state, we know that the body does not heal, repair, and recover as well. So hyperbaric as a recovery tool should be used throughout the entire year. Let's say in the off season, it could just be used intermittently to make sure that we're supporting that athlete in their off time. That might look like one to two hours a week. It doesn't have to be a lot. As they start getting into their training season and training starts to pick up, hyperbaric should also pick up at a similar pace. So as the training begins to develop and now we're training harder and harder as we're getting into a peak training state, the hyperbaric regimen should mimic that. So we might go to one to two hours a week up to four to five or six hours a week, maybe 60 to 90 minutes every night after a training bout and before bed. That's a great way to use it as a recovery tool while the training is increasing. When the training is a little less intense, maybe 60 minutes is enough. And as the training gets more intense, 90 minutes should be considered. If during that time training is really peaking and performance is continuing to improve, that should be the best way to use hyperbaric throughout the training season. If we start to see a period in that training season where training is continuing to improve, but now we're starting to see a dip in performance, we know that we have to increase our hyperbaric, maybe 60 minutes twice a day, a morning session and an evening session, or two hours a day, even if it has to be in one longer session. But in my opinion, it would be optimal to do 60 minutes twice a day separate and allowing two different rounds of healing and regeneration to occur for that athlete. In most cases, as long as their fuel is optimal, they're getting the sleep that they need, they're getting the right nutrition, and we're adding a tool like hyperbaric, the 60 minutes at the mile training is pretty good, 90 minutes as training is increasing, and then 60 to 90 minutes twice a day if training is increasing but performance is starting to decrease. That should create a plan that's very meaningful for most athletes. On the performance side, we really don't want to activate the parasympathetic system, right? In the parasympathetics, we're very calm and we're very relaxed. And in most sports, that's the opposite of what we're trying to create as we're stepping into the competition. And so for that reason, I would tend to use performance sessions much shorter in length, 20 to 30 minutes, certainly no more than 40 minutes. I find that 45 minutes to an hour is enough to really trigger that parasympathetic relaxation state but 40 minutes or less doesn't trigger and allows that athlete to jump back into sympathetic as they're approaching competition time. So for the day of the competition, shorter sessions is definitely my preferred mode of use for hyperbaric in that case. If the competition is later in the day, I might do multiple shorter sessions. So two or three 20 to 30 minute sessions during the day leading up to the competition, just building some oxygen, tapering down, building some oxygen, and we get a few rounds of that. We might get 60 minutes of treatment, but broken up into three short rounds leading up to the competition, but still allowing that athlete to have plenty of increased oxygen to be used as that performance enhancing tool. So again, there's really no athlete that I can think of that shouldn't be using hyperbaric as part of their routine. And it really doesn't matter if you're a weekend warrior athlete or your elite level athlete, you're all looking to improve your performance, improve your recovery, to feel good, to be able to do your activity, your sport, your event, as long as you can, as healthy as you can, while at the same time trying to minimize any of the consequences of, of being injured or under-recovered so that you can't perform either in your sport or maybe it's just performance in your life or at work. And so using hyperbaric as this tool to improve the recovery in between competitive bouts and then to use it for the performance for your competition will really allow you to get the most out of the hyperbaric experience, the most out of the healing, regeneration, recovery, and performance, while also minimizing any risk of injury or overexertion or overtraining. If you're in practice or about to be in practice or you've been in practice, but you're trying to tighten things up and really dial in your hyperbaric practice, we put together a free ebook guide. It gives you some jumpstart tips as well as some checklists to go through to make sure that you have your policies, procedures, all rolling in the right direction 
so that you can have a successful practice. If you're interested in that, click on the link in the description below and we'll make sure we send you to the page where you can learn more and get your free copy of our ebook.